The last time we had a, a panel of whistleblowers, we were um, honoured to have Catherine Gunn speaking, but we are equally honoured to have another British whistleblower, Eileen Chubb, um, who was one of the Booper 7 whistleblowers who lost their jobs after reporting widespread abuse um, of elderly people in care homes. So Eileen, we're delighted to have you here. I didn't even know what the word whistleblower was. I thought it was some kind of musical instrument when I started. Um, I just thought if you saw a real wrong and you said something, that police cars would come with the, you know, sirens blaring. Um, what I discovered was that it's one thing to report abuse, it's quite another to stop it. Um, Jimmy Savile, does that surprise me? No, it doesn't. Not in the least. I'm just, you know, more Jimmy Savile's are happening right now. In our own case, we were the first PEDA case, which is the first case to use the UK whistleblowing law, the Public Interest Disclosure Act. We spent three years in the system, basically amounting to how much do you want to keep your mouth shut forever, and Booper not having enough money to do so because it was never about money. It was about getting the abuse stopped. Booper hid known abusers, and I'm not just talking about people that shout at people, people that enjoy torture, power abusers, people that like bending people's fingers back because they wanted to see people scream with pain. Yes, to this day, it upsets me, but we spent three years in the legal system to be told that we hadn't considered the consequences to ourselves before we reported the abuse. Social services fully upheld the allegations. That wasn't enough. Social services came to our tribunal and gave evidence and written statements that they witnessed us being harassed, which included physical assaults. I was hit in the back with a chair. Um, we were spat at. We turn up with a 7 a.m. shift and be told to come back at midnight. Our wages weren't paid and would be given two pounds to live on for the month. And they'd say, oh, it's a mistake and it's quite legal to do this. You'll get the rest next month. But two pounds to buy food and survive for a month. We were basically... A man called Des Kelly came into the home. He was head of Booper Care Homes. Um, we told him what was happening to us and he did nothing. He currently advises the government on whistleblowing and elderly care. Um, the head of Booper, Val Goodin, advises the Home Office on integrity and whistleblowing issues. It's like asking Harold Shipman about what medication standards we should have, put them in charge of NICE. Um, we were called the perfect whistleblowers because we did everything right. We went internally, repeatedly. There were seven of us. We all worked in different parts of the building. We went internally. We photocopied the medication records. They were burning them in one of the bathrooms, and we managed to save some, and we took out all of the medication records. Um, I realised when we got the verdict, as my husband said, if you don't fight this, you'll damn every whistleblower who comes after you. And I'm not a fighter, I'm a quiet person who just wanted to do my job and go home at the end of the day. I didn't want to be the person that had to stand up on the stage, and here I am 16 years later in awe of these people. <laughs> um, but I had to do it, because if I didn't bear witness for those I saw abused, then nobody else was going to do that. Um, I founded the charity Compassion and Care in 2003. I wrote a book called Beyond the Facade, which tells the whole story of the Booper 7 case and names all of the abusers right up to the chief executive. Booper have never lifted a finger against me. Um, a second book, Here We Stand, was launched at the Hay Festival last year, and the legal people who passed that read my book and said, oh my God, they're telling the truth. Nobody would blow the whistle and go through the fight that we have if they weren't telling the truth. Since then, I've worked closely with the media to 
expose abuse in, in all care settings, not just um, elderly care, but, you know, learning difficulties, children. The most vulnerable in our society, young offenders, they are all, the abuse and the scale of it is horrendous. And why it happens is because we don't protect whistleblowers. On our website, Compassion and Care, you'll find our evidence breaking the silence and it tells you what happens to people when they speak out. The ongoing detriment as a result of blowing the whistle, it, it, it's never ending. We were blacklisted, you'd ring up for a job um, and be told that, oh, the job is just gone as soon as you said your name. Are you one of those beeper people? I decided then that I didn't want to be the kind of charity that sat in an office and went, oh, this is shocking. Or just to have a helpline that told people to draw a line under it and move on with your life. Because whistleblowers can't draw a line under it. Because when they're reporting abuse of vulnerable people and nothing is done about that abuse, they want to get that exposed. Last year, Panorama... Um, filmed undercover in the old deanery as a result of the whistleblowers that came to our helpline. Seven whistleblowers in the Beeper 7 case, 14 in the old deanery, not enough. Not enough that they went to the authorities, not enough that they went to the police, not enough that they went to social services and the CQC. They lost their jobs and yet the abuse continued and Panorama went in and filmed undercover and, caught, and captured exactly what these whistleblowers had said. So, you know, I'd love to get Panorama in every care home. I'm sure I could keep them in work for years, round the clock. But it shouldn't have to come to that. So as it started off, 70% of, of the whistleblowers that came to us were from healthcare. 30% were from all other sectors, police, um, retail, I don't want to sort of say anything that might put anyone in jeopardy, but right across the board, and they were all saying the same thing. People with immaculate work records, um, who've never had a problem, suddenly become the problem. Um, and, you know, the thing is, people are now so frightened to speak out. Most people know that the, the whistleblowing law that we have in this country is a sorry excuse for legal protection. Oh, you hear much fine words from the government. Oh, yes, we want people to speak out. Well, you know, and Robert Francis, the inquiry that was held here was a total sham and whitewash. The reality is I sit in employment tribunals all the time just to remind myself about the scale of injustice of this law and yet nothing is, you know, is in the mainstream media about why are whistleblowers not protected, why can you know, people's lives have been destroyed. You know, typical of the kind of things that said to me are, um, I've got two tins of soup in my cupboard and I'm so scared because I don't have any family in this country. So it's hard enough to see somebody that's got nothing, and I mean literally no food, but, you know, it's, it's hard enough if they've fallen on hard times. But when they're in that position, because they've done the right thing, I think that is a shame on this country that we can call ourselves a free country. On a lighter um, touch, I, I still pay the price for the whistleblowing and I try to see the funny side of it. Compassion and Care does not take government money or money from any um, corporation because you can't serve the whistleblower and the vulnerable victim of abuse if you're in the pay of the government or any <laughs> corporate. I mean, to tell you a funny story, we I couldn't go to an optician for 16 years. I had to go around squinting and, and feeling my way. And I've only recently got contact lenses because somebody took pity on me and the family. However, you know, I was on a plane and I couldn't find my seat number and people were getting a bit irritable with me because I was trying to count the seat numbers down from the front. The fact is, you know, I'm still paying the price for, you know, being a whistleblower. I've got no pension, I've got no savings. 
my husband, we just live on a small pension. However, I have got my integrity. And if I can have... All I'd say is that I'm bearing witness for the people in Izzard House. Um, I'm still bearing witness for them because they can't have suffered for nothing. If we can save one more life because of that. Edna's law is a law that we're fighting for here and it's gaining huge support. It would make it a criminal offence to cause harm to a genuine whistleblower to fail to act on their concerns. There's lots of information on this on our website and we have massive support from whistleblowers and they're the people we want to listen to. At the end of the day, there was no one there for us. There was no one there to help us, even though we suffered a massive injustice. Um, what I'd say is the next time you see someone going down at dustbins looking for food, ask yourself, is that a whistleblower? Because that's the price people are paying, and that's the price people are paying for trying to save a life. And if at the end of all this, they can put one thing on my headstone, it would be, she saved one life. And that's all that matters. Thank you very much, Arlene.